Hey, welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't need to, and today we are talking about SoFi Technologies, ticker name SoFi. SoFi Technologies is a fintech company or a financial technology company that essentially operates as a digital bank, and today we are analyzing three articles to where the first one is titled, Why SoFi Stock Dropped 16% This Week, and Whether or Not Investors Should Buy This Company on Weakness. Next, we're going to be analyzing an article titled, Dear SoFi Stock Fans, Mark Mark your calendars for January 29th. So clearly there's going to be an upcoming catalyst in the form of their earnings report. And then lastly, we're going to be analyzing an article titled Measuring SoFi's Meteoric Rise as it Revolutionizes Finance. So for more videos on SoFi Technologies, don't forget to go and annihilate that like button right now. Subscribe if you are new. Go ahead and become a member of this channel for as little as 99 cents per month because that's what keeps me here on YouTube. And with that being said, let's jump right into today's stories. SoFi stock is currently trading at around $8.38 cents per share, rising by close to 2% as of right now. However, it has been a bumpy ride considering that SoFi Technologies has fallen in their share price by 16.6% this week alone according to the data, and this was due to the fact that a Wall Street analyst downgraded the banking and fintech services stock, which caused shares to plummet downwards. Essentially, the analyst downgraded the company to an underperform rating and they lowered their share price target from $7.50 down to a price prediction of $6.50 for the year of 2024. To justify this relatively bearish perspective, this analyst noted that SoFi shares had rallied more than 40% on the heels of its quote-unquote stellar third quarter report in early November. Now, let me chime in here. Who cares that it surged up to its actual price point in November? We are very disconnected from November, and we are actually looking forward to their next earnings report now. So it really doesn't make sense for somebody to complain about November when we are already in 2024, while we rapidly approach an upcoming earnings report. This analyst also worried that because of falling interest rates in the coming year, which the Federal Reserve is anticipated to lower interest rates around three or four times, this could weigh down down SoFi's earnings prospects because this is one of the ways that SoFi makes money. The analyst also said that for every quarter point reduction in interest rates as they fall, this will impact SoFi's reported revenue by approximately $50 million or around $0.05 cents per share in regards to their earnings. So I understand his perspective. He thinks that because interest rates are going to decrease, this is negatively going to affect SoFi Technologies' revenue and earnings. However, I would like to point out that I've already addressed this before, and many others have as well. Well, as I've highlighted and the author of this article has highlighted, the CEO, Anthony Nodo of SoFi Technologies detailed how the National Bank Charter and SoFi's superior cost structure compared to other traditional banks will actually enable SoFi to be able to hold their own rates much longer and higher than their competitors in regards to things such as deposits, even as the Federal Reserve decides to lower interest rates. And this is one of the factors that differentiates SoFi from other fintechs and other traditional banks. For instance, because SoFi Technologies is a fintech company, they can offer higher interest rates on their customer deposits, which is great news for customers, while other traditional banks have very low interest rates in regards to their deposits, which is bad for customers. Now, on the flip side, because SoFi Technologies has a bank charter, this allows them to be better than other fintech companies because it allows SoFi Technologies to offer various products and services that traditional fintechs can't. So you get the best of both worlds in regards to banking and fintech when you invest into SoFi Technologies, and that's their main competitive advantage. We also need to take into consideration that SoFi is rapidly approaching their first ever generally accepted accounting principles net profit, meaning that they are going to be profitable from now onwards. At least that's what management is predicting, and we are anticipated to find this out in their upcoming fourth quarter earnings report which we will talk about right now. Currently, SoFi has confirmed that their fourth quarter earnings report will be around January 29th on Monday before the market opens. Now, the reason I say that is because I need you as an investor to be aware of this upcoming earnings report. On January 29th, this is going to act as either a phenomenal catalyst which will boost the overall share price or cause it to plummet. Because let me tell you, if they do not achieve gap profitability, the share price is going to absolutely crash downwards. However, I've been saying this for quite a while now, 
they will achieve gap profitability. That's how confident I am in this company. And the overall data just tells us that exact story. Just looking at the financials and the metrics and their growth rate, it is a no brainer that this company will achieve gap profitability in this upcoming earnings report. This is supposed to be a huge milestone for the overall company as analysts expect that they will report their first ever profitable quarter of one cent per share on an earnings per share basis. On top of that, analysts have also forecasted that they will bring in approximately $572 million, which would equate to a year over year growth of 29%, which is extremely impressive. But that's not all. We're also going to get metrics for the full year of 2023, considering that they are reporting on their last quarter of 2023. And for the entire year, they're anticipated to bring in a gap earnings per share loss of 35 cents and a revenue of $2.056 billion, which equates to a 33.44% year over year increase. Again, these are phenomenal numbers for a rapidly growing fintech company. Now, we also have upcoming guidance for their current quarter earnings. Let's say quarter one of 2024. So this would be their next earnings report, not the one on January 29th, but rather their next one. They are anticipated to bring in revenue of $576 million, which would equate to a 25.1% year over year increase and a gap loss of just one cent. Furthermore, analysts anticipate that SoFi will be profitable for the entire year of 2024. So what does this mean? It means that once we obtain their earnings reports for the entire year of 2024, they will be profitable for the entire year with a gap earnings per share estimate of six cents and total revenue coming in at $2.522 billion, which when we compare to 2023 will be a huge improvement because remember, for the full year of 2023, they're anticipated to bring in a gap earnings per share loss of 35 cents. However, in 2024, you will have six cents on the positive side. So again, this is very good news for SoFi Technologies. But let's talk about their price point right now. Currently, like we said, Palantir is trading between eight to nine dollars, while the average price target for this company, according to 17 analysts who cover this stock, say that this company is worth around nine dollars and 12 cents, meaning that you have around a 10% upside from current levels, while the lowest share price target for this company is three dollars and the highest highest price prediction for this company is around $15. Overall, I am excited for the upcoming catalyst on January 29th, and I am excited for the full year regarding what SoFi Technologies can bring in. But lastly, we want to talk about why this company is so innovative. And if you've been following SoFi Technologies, you know that they have been on a remarkable growth trajectory that is disrupting the fintech and traditional banking spaces. The company has been growing their adjusted net revenue by 43.1% percent on average quarter over quarter for the last five quarters. On top of that, this is the most impressive thing for me. They have grown their customers from 1 million customers in the beginning of 2020 to nearly 7 million in the third quarter of 2023. And this customer growth rate is anticipated to accelerate in 2024. Now, the reason that customers are being attracted to this company is because not only do they offer more products and services than traditional fintech companies, but they also have more competitive rates than traditional banks. Again, you get the best of both worlds for this company, and that's why they are able to attract so many young high earners to their platform. The company has an unparalleled onboarding and marketing strategy, which allows their flywheel business model to really take advantage of all of this inflow from customers, where they can cross sell and upsell customers on a plethora of various products and services that they offer. SoFi has grown their members by a compounding annual growth rate, also known as a CAGR, of 66.7% over the last three years. And membership will be on a high growth trajectory in the coming years due to their network effect and their, quote, multi-layered value addition for customers. We also see that they are very competitive in regards to their revenue to asset ratio, which is very good. For instance, you see Block, PayPal, and Affirm that have this ratio from 20 
20.5% up to 63.9%. However, you see other more digital focused companies such as Coinbase to SoFi, which has a ratio anywhere between 2.1% and 7.0%. And clearly the advantage here goes to the fintech companies, which would be Coinbase, Robinhood, and SoFi Technologies. But again, because SoFi Technologies can do things that Robinhood and Coinbase can't, and they can also do things that other traditional banking institutions can't, or at least other financial firms can't, this makes SoFi Technologies literally a perfect medium between both of these spaces. We also need to take into consideration that Anthony Noto said that their lending side of the business will be adding to the overall growth of their technology platform and their financial services segment, which will be more growth drivers for this company. SoFi Technologies is still in their early stages of their evolution. However, as time goes on, we know that they are going to continuously take market share from other traditional banks and fintech companies and even steal their overall customers, which I am very excited about. We even see a phenomenal revenue mix for this company, and I anticipate that they will have a strong 2024 overall, especially as they continuously surge to profitability. They're anticipated to be profitable as of this quarter onwards. And I think this will reflect in their overall share price. That means that because they were recently downgraded by an analyst and the share price went down, this is literally one of the best buying opportunities in SoFi stock right now before they become profitable. And ideally, you would want this company in your portfolio before they officially become profitable because from that point onwards, the stock isn't going to fall probably below $45 from that point on. So this could literally be your last chance to accumulate some cheap SoFi shares before they become profitable. And thanks to their downgrade by an analyst, you can get shares for even cheaper. But I would love to hear your thoughts down below. Don't forget to go and annihilate that like button right now. Subscribe if you are new. Go ahead and become a member of this channel for as little as 99 cents per month because that's what keeps me here on YouTube. And with all of that being said, I wish you the best of luck, happy investing, and I will see you in the next YT video.